Hey, hey, I'm jumping on here a little bit early so we can get the chat up and running. Hey, girlfriend. What's up, Miss Sally? What's going on? Nothing much. Setting up this computer screen. Getting ready Ooh, to like your, rock your I like your Christmas tree. Yeah. Good job on that. It looks like a hot. So here a little early as you're coming on, if you could mute yourself and uh, go ahead and let me know in the chat that you are here. Introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, let me know if you're building something online, if you're running like a online business, anything like that. Yeah, just shoot it out there. Excited to meet you all, hear what you're doing. If you're calling in from the phone, I apologize because you won't be able to text in the chat, but hey, <clears throat> download the Zoom app and then you'll never miss some of our cool chats. So hey, Sally, welcome. Go ahead and let me know in the chat what's up. Say hello, introduce yourself. As hang, on, hang, on, hang on just one second, technical difficulties. <laughs> Hold on. And we're going to give everybody a couple of minutes to hop on here. Going to start at 8 p.m. sharp. Time is 7.59. So, yeah, you guys check out my uber wet hair. The funness of working from home. All right, all right, all right. I'm really excited to talk about what we're talking about today because uh, it's something that I get asked about quite often. Building that Instagram following. All right, I see Sally in the chat. What's up? What's up, what's up? Oh, let's see here. Got about 30 seconds and then we're gonna dive right in. For those of you that are like new to this whole mind your business thing, we do these Wednesday webinars, free, um, just tons of like useful, helpful content. So we are gonna jump right in. Um, if you guys are having like difficulty seeing me or if I'm breaking up or there's something weird going on, uh, let me know because it's kind of, stuttering on my end over here. All right, so we're gonna dive right into growing your Instagram following organically. I'm just getting the screen share up and running. Here we go. Awesome sauce. And I'm going to, nope, wrong thing. I'm going to run this one a little bit different so that I can see the chat, but keep it kind of out of the way. All right, hopefully none of my stuff is in your way. If it is, um, shoot, in the, shoot me in the chat and let me know that you guys can see my stuff in your way. I don't think it should be. All right, so what we're here for tonight, how to grow your Instagram following organically presented to you by none other than myself, Allie Renee. We're gonna jump right in. Maybe, there we go. All right, so as you can see, there's currently 1 billion active users on Instagram. Uh, you guys, that is like really close to, thank you Sally for that, that's really close to the you know roughly 2.19 billion active users on Facebook. And yes, I said billion. Um, that is a huge reach of people. So if you're building on Facebook and only Facebook, yeah, you're doing okay. But here's why you should be building on Instagram because Instagram is still growing. It is continuing to grow. And the great thing about Instagram is it was bought by Facebook and now the two work together. So you can host an ad on both Instagram and Facebook through the same business account. I absolutely love that feature, although we're not diving into that. That's more for a masterclass. 
Um, but yeah, we'll continue with that. And then Snapchat has, you know, roughly 100 million active users, which is still a ton. Um, we're not covering that one tonight though. So my favorite aspect of Instagram and why I believe build businesses building their marketing campaigns on Instagram is a really viable choice is because it provides a fun visual experience for users. A lot of times when people are, you know, researching products and things like that, they don't want to see like a long brochure, right? They want like an eye popping photo, something to reach out and grab their attention with like a cute little tagline under it. And we're going to go over that tonight on, you know, it's just some ideas of what you can do with that. So um, if you're ready, hit me in the chat, say ready. And we're going to keep pressing on. I just, I'm going to keep pinging you guys in the chat because I want to make sure that you're still with me. <laughs> All right. So what exactly does it mean when people talk about growing your following, following organically? Organically growing your Instagram following or any social media following simply means that you're utilizing the free tools that that platform provides you and you're interacting with other users and, and posting engaging content and things like that. So you're not going out and like spam, you know, bot spamming people in their inbox. I see Sally's ready. Um, Brandon's ready. You're, you're not paying for your, your followers, basically. Um, there's tons of programs out there where you can buy followers. And the reason I do not recommend doing that is because those followers that you get are followers that you're going to have a hard time converting into actual customers. They're not actually, you know, um, they're not paying attention to you. They're just following you because they were bought. And some of those followers are bots, you know, robots. So you're really wasting a lot of money in just building followers. And I actually posted a blog post on our Mind Your Business blog about why being Instagram famous isn't required to be a successful business. It's all about reaching your target audience. If your target audience is only, you know, a couple hundred thousand people, that's fine. Focus on those couple 100,000 people instead of 18 million people where most of them don't care. And yeah, they might be liking your post, but they really aren't going to buy your product or they're not going to buy your service. You know, focus on people in your target audience. And a lot of times for, you know, brick and mortar stores, your target audience might be more regional. So there's somebody within a certain driving distance of your store. Pay attention to those things. We're going to dive into a really cool pointer on that one too, a little later on. So that is what it looks like to, or what, what we mean when we say building organically. So the topics that we're going to cover tonight, maximizing your bio, hashtags, tagging locations, engaging with others in your niche, catchy taglines for your photos, using videos, and utilizing your stories. These are all on Instagram. <clears throat> So the first one, maximizing your bio. When you go in and create your Instagram bio and you're either doing it for your personal brand or your business or something like that, there's some things that you really need to understand about the mechanics of how Instagram works. You don't have a whole lot of space to type out like this crazy long post of a bio. So you really just need to hit bullet points. And what I mean is a lot of people will go in there and say a uh, public speaker and then they'll put their experience and then they'll put, you know, um, a website and things like that. And, um, you know, they might even add in like some other affiliations with people into their bio. So keep your bio as concise as possible, but also informative. You want people that are visiting your page they want, you want them to see something that is of value to make them follow you. So put that out there early on. And the best way to do that is right there in your bio. bio. Think a bulleted resume when you're putting that bio together. Uh, no fluff, you know, like I said, make it worth their while. Don't forget to share your links or websites. And last but not least, use a compelling profile, profile pic or logo because if, <laughs> If you're running like a lawn mowing business and you post a picture of you at, you know, the Dallas Stars hockey game with a beer in your hand, that has absolutely nothing to do with mowing lawns, okay? 
So keep it very relevant to what your actual target market is, what your niche is, and what your brand is. Always keep your social media profiles consistent with your brand. Moving on. Hashtags. This is my favorite one. And if you're watching this webinar, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you can reach out to me and I will send you a list of hashtags that I know for a fact are very widely used. I mean, like millions and millions, sometimes billions, which means, well, we're, we're going to dive into what, what, why using hashtags is important. So with hashtags on Instagram, don't be modest. Use tons of hashtags, like go crazy with hashtags. I know this sounds absolutely absurd. Just trust me. Yes, Sally, hashtags <laughs> with an exclamation point. The way hashtags work is when you use a hashtag, there are, there's, there's a difference between a branded hashtag and a community hashtag. So for instance, say I am saying like, I love hashtag hot dogs. Well, that goes out to the community of people that I've ever hashtagged or posted anything about hot dogs, and they're all going to see that content, right? Or maybe they're following like a hot dog, you know, community page. And so that's automatically going to, you know, populate to that page. Or um, whenever we do a branded hashtag, I say hashtag Oscar Mayer Wiener, you know, and now Oscar Mayer is picked up that hashtag and it's populating on their page. So anybody that's following Oskmeyer is seeing that. So you can kind of see how that works with some of the bigger brands. Now, with hashtags, when if you don't have the list that I can send you, the biggest thing to do is when you start typing hashtag and you start filling it out, it'll populate underneath and show you how popular that hashtag is. It'll say how many posts are using this hashtag or how many times it's been used. You want to pick the more popular ones because it's going to be seen by more eyes, right? So pay attention to how popular the hashtags are and change them up. If you're using the same hashtags all the time, eventually people get tired of seeing your stuff and, you know, they just, they stop paying attention to it. I've tested this theory out on multiple different things. Like one of the things, because I'm, I'm writing a book which I was talking about on my last podcast, is if you are using the same hashtags over and over and over, the first couple of posts might be like through the roof with impressions. And then right after that, they like start to trickle down. So what I was doing is just to test it out. Like I wanted to test this theory. I, my book is, you know, writing about kids with ADHD and um, behavior disorders and things like that. So I started hashtagging like specific behavior disorders, like ADHD, bipolar, sensory processing disorder, autism, like all these things and, um, used a ton of them. Well, the first three times I used those hashtags, whoo, my impressions were like up in the thousands, like some of them even farther. And I was just like, wow, that's crazy. Like, look at the reach I got just from the hashtags. And when you look at your activity results or insights on an Instagram post, it'll tell you how many came from hashtags. 83% on those posts, roughly between 83 and like 90% came from the hashtags alone on those impressions. So that gives you an idea of how much reach your hashtags can have. But I didn't change them up and I kept them consistent. And sure enough, like those impressions started to trickle down really fast. So make sure you're changing up your hashtags for your best results and always keep them relevant to the pro to, the, to your post. Don't be like, um, you know, oh my God, just went to McDonald's, hashtag caramel frappe, and then be like, hashtag man better buy me a diamond ring, hashtag like keep it relevant to the post. You know what I mean? So um, I, I do see those all the time and I'm just like, that has nothing to do with this post. And it's just people hashtagging their brand. When you do that, it actually lowers the reach that you have because it like Instagram kind of pings you as a potential bot or spammer. So don't use irrelevant hashtags to your posts. Next up is tagging locations. This one I really, really like. It was a new thing for me to discover and I think it is super badass. So if you operate in a specific region or store, you can tag that region in your post and anybody that lives in that region that like has registered their Facebook or sorry, Instagram in that region will see your post. So for instance, if you own a Krispy Kreme's Donuts, hi, welcome to the call. 
if you own a Krispy Kreme Donuts and you, you know, say you live in Casper, Wyoming, I don't even know if they have Krispy Kreme, and you, you say, um, you know, stop by our Krispy Kreme Donuts and then hit at and just type in Casper, Wyoming, anybody who lives in that region or within a certain distance of that region is going to see your content for your business. So that's really cool. Tagging uh, regions and locations. Super neat. When we started it, I was like, this is like the best thing ever. Uh, especially if you're, like I said, a brick and mortar store, you are getting like as many people as you possibly can in that area. This helps consumers find you. Um, and if you own multiple locations, but you have like a promotion going on at one of them, like say you own like five Chick-fil-A's, and you know the one that you have in Dallas, Texas, you've got this promotion going on. So you you do all your hashtagging, and then you do hashtag Chick Fil A, and then at sign, and you'll do like Dallas, Texas, and then you'll hit like everybody in that region, which by the way is a ton of people. So good thing to know: tagging locations is a great way to help your consumers find you without going and stalking them, which I have to say, and this kind of goes, it's a segue into this next point. Um, how many of you, and be honest, how many of you <laughs> have gone on Instagram and just started like following everyone that you see just to see if they would follow you back? Go ahead, hit me up in the chat. Let me know if you're guilty. Just say hashtag guilty. <clears throat> That's right. I'm getting some guilties. Okay. <laughs> yes. So I'm guilty too, right? I did that very early on in my network marketing career and it went absolutely nowhere. You guys following people that you don't even know just to see it, like just fingers crossed that they're going to follow you back is really just wasting a bunch of time because chances are they're probably not going to follow you back. And even if they do, they're not going to stick around because they're not within your niche or your target market. So why bother? You know what I mean? Like don't waste your time. So that, like I said, segues, segues me into our next point, which is engaging with others in your niche. Know what your niche is. If you sell weight loss supplements, your niche needs to be like fitness, like all health and fitness, right? So why are you following, you know, um, the comedy club and this author and things like that, you know, onesies and twosies here and there are fine. But when you do that, when you follow people outside of your niche, it starts populating other people to come up to you, like come up in like suggestions for people that you should follow. And then you go down this rabbit hole of following a bunch of people that are completely irrelevant to your brand and your market and your target, you know? So it's really not beneficial to do that for anyone. So search for people within your niche. And um, if you don't know how to search, hit me up. I can explain it to you. It's a little hard to show you like without sharing my Instagram feed to you. Um, I covered that part. So an example, I see this a lot. If you're a makeup artist and you're doing like the, the makeup vlogs and you know, posting your makeup pictures and things like that, you probably should only be following like makeup branded celebrities, makeup artists, like other makeup artists, and, you know, maybe some makeup brands. Maybe you're a brand ambassador for some makeup brands. So you're doing things like that. So you wouldn't go and, you know, have this whole page about being a makeup artist and then start engaging with car dealerships just because you like Porsches, right? <laughs> because now you're going to start getting all these car salesmen that are popping up in your like suggestions for people that you should follow. And you're probably going to end up following because they might have like millions of followers because they sell Porsches. And then guess what? Now all of your people in your following are a bunch of car dealers and they probably don't give two flying flips about your makeup. So keep it very unique to your niche. Last but not least on this point, there are these things out there called Instagram loops, um, Instagram pods. There's a couple of different names for them. Basically where you get in, you like agree to um, go follow people within this pod and or loop, and then they'll go follow you. I caution against that. And here's why. 
if you are in Instagram loops, yes, you're building this huge following most likely, but how many of these people are going to be your customers? How many of them can you actually convert to a, a customer? Probably none of them. They're all building their own thing. That's why they're in the loop. So they don't care about building your thing. Yeah, they'll follow you, but what's the follow worth? You know what I mean? And some of these Instagram loops, you even have to pay to be a part of. So avoid them. That's my advice to you. Um, I know a couple of people that get on them and they're like, oh, my following on Instagram jumped up to like 7,000 followers in a week. Hey, that's great. But how many of those even know what you do or like are liking your post or even engaging with you? Probably not even half. So don't even waste your time with it. Um, just do it organically. And, and the Instagram loops is not really organic. Next thing is catchy taglines for photos. So if you're calling on the phone, I apologize because you probably cannot see my cute little posts. Um, so what I mean by catchy taglines for your photos on Instagram, keep it cute and clever. Don't be long winded all the time. I like to put some long winded ones out there, but then sometimes I like to just put like some random ones out there just to like engage the people that are following me. Put a little bit of thought into it. Like don't just post something that is completely irrelevant to your business. One of my favorite ones was I actually, you guys, I love donuts and I do follow Krispy Kreme, which has nothing to do with my market. But anyway, so I do follow Krispy Kreme and um, one of the Krispy Kreme donut places that's near us, they posted this like delicious looking picture of a sprinkle donut. And um, you guys, it was red velvet, which is my favorite. So shout out, Christmas coming out. I'll send you my address if you want to send me some red velvet donuts with sprinkles on them. <laughs> um, if you're alive and well, go ahead and let me know in the chat. Just be like, girl, I'm going to send you some donuts. I'm serious. All right. So, um, what I have on the slide for those of you that are on the phone, I'll kind of paint the picture for you. I have a picture of a fence post and I said, in quotations, isn't this a clever post? <laughs> so that's what we kind of mean by catchy taglines. But where I was going with the Krispy Kreme one was the post that they put out was, um, you know, this picture of the donut and then underneath it, it was something about um, donut let your day get ahead of you. Have a like have a sweet breakfast or something like that. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Yeah, Sally's gonna send me some donuts. All right, you committed girl, own it. No. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the next one. Use your videos on Instagram. A lot of people just post pictures. You guys, so much engagement can come from videos. Uh, especially if you own a business, some of the ideas that you can use for a video on Instagram is showing products on like in live action. Like you can show people like, this is what I have. I see people do it all the time on Facebook. You know, they're always Facebook live, but how come nobody's ever Instagram live? And I think Instagram is still a great place to, to do, you know, that, that live product demonstration. If it's something that is more detailed that might require just a little bit of like education on how to use it, put a video up on your site and then like, don't recreate the content, just, you know, reshare the post, change the words up a little here and there and then share it again and then share it again. <laughs> like, this is how you keep good content coming out. Change up your hashtags a little bit like we talked earlier and then just keep it moving. Another thing that you can do with videos on Instagram, unboxing videos, you guys, these literally are some of the highest ranked videos on all social media platforms. If you go to YouTube and just search unbox anything, like you will see like a crap ton of videos come up and they have tons of views. There is something about the anticipation of people sitting and watching you open a box. Like they don't know what's in there and they're just like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't wait to see. And then they might be disappointed about what's in the box, but still they watched your video, right? So <laughs> unboxing videos are like, I'm not going to lie. I'm guilty. I love watching them. If you watch unbox videos, yes, Sally, use your videos and stories. Um, hit me up in the chat and let me know if you love watching unbox videos. Like, I'm not going to lie. One of my favorite things to do is watch the Chewy box unbox videos. I don't know why, because we don't even subscribe to Chewy, but I still think it's really cool that they do that for pets. Uh, another one that you can do is product reviews from your customers through videos. <laughs> yeah, we got some that are guilty of watching unboxing videos. 
See, I'm not the only one. You guys, this is why they are the top most viewed. So product reviews from your customers through videos. You can ask your customers to submit like a photo um, with a review or a video review. And when they do that, you can share it on your page. When people see an actual video of somebody talking and saying, yes, they're holding your product and they're like, I bought this and I absolutely love it. And here's why that is the best kind of commercial that you can get. And you don't even have to pay for it. Hello. <laughs> you should be like writing notes right now. Like the light bulb should be going off in your head. Hit me up in the chat, say hashtag light bulb. If it's like ding, ding, ding right now. Um, and then always like the rest of what we've been saying this entire presentation is keep your videos relevant to your brand. Please don't share videos of you riding your Harley if your brand is, you know, selling bras. Okay, maybe that could go together, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so, you know, keep it consistent. If you're selling weight loss supplements, don't be posting pictures or videos of like this decadent chocolate cake with like chocolate drizzle fountain on it and, you know, all these strawberries and things like that, unless you're Jenny Craig seller and like, it's really only like 50 calories, you know, keep it relevant. I believe this is our last topic. The last one is use your Instagram stories. So fun fact for all of you, about one third, Hi, Pamela. Welcome to the call. Um, if you're in the actual Zoom app, just hit me up in the chat and introduce yourself. You're catching us right at the end, so I hope you get some of this, but we are recording, so I will post it and share later. Um, back to the fun facts. About one-third of most viewed Instagram stories are businesses' stories. So, you guys, businesses are already putting their stories out there and people are going crazy. They're, they're opening those stories up and they're looking at them. The great thing about stories is it's like a constant notification at the top. And for people like most of the world that hate seeing those little red notifications all over their phone, they're going to click it just to watch it. Right. Cause they want to get rid of that. Like it's like a task to do. And until they do it, it's going to be there and it's going to be like slapping them in the face. Yes. We got a hashtag light bulb from the previous slide. Um, so I mean, it, it's a no-brainer, really. You should be posting to your stories, but here's the kind of stuff that you should be putting in your stories for your business or your brand, right? Post of the minute content because it's not something that you need to keep on your, on your page, right? It's, it's going to go away. So for instance, if you are a makeup artist, post of the minute content, which would be something uh, like you're doing somebody's makeup right now and you're posting a video of it or a couple of snapshots of like the process of doing their makeup. It's only there for like 24 hours and then it's gone, but people are getting excited and then they can't wait for that actual post that you're going to put out with the finished product, right? So it's keeping your uh, audience engaged. People love behind the scenes stuff. They absolutely love behind the scenes stuff. If you're like a public speaker, you know, show them what it looks like behind the stage when you're getting ready. Like talk about, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Or like you're working your jitters out or your pre, you know, speech routine, whatever that is. Maybe you're um, a musical artist and you're doing stuff like that, you know, um, whatever your behind the scenes is, like get on there and rock it. It's going to be gone. So if it's a hot mess, who cares? It's going to be gone. And the, the great thing about the Instagram stories is you have some cool little stickers and buttons and things like that, that you can do. You can also like build up anticipation for something that's coming up. Like I could use it for these webinars and go in and be like, okay guys, we're starting in like five minutes, three minutes, you know, just doing stuff like that to be silly. But now people are engaged and they're watching it. Um, which moves us on to wait for it, wait for it. All right, our closing remarks. So to recap what all we've talked about, um, which we didn't really hit on this one, but I like to throw it in at the end, post on a schedule and always keep it relevant. We say keep it real in the world, but for Instagram and for any kind of online marketing, it's always going to be keep it relevant. So keep it relevant, y'all. Post on a schedule, keep it relevant. For those of you who missed the last webinar, if you go into your settings on Instagram and your activity, you can see your insights. And what it'll show you is like a scheduled 
list thing kind of that shows you what days and what times in those days people were interacting with your page the most. And I really like that because it kind of tells you when to post. Like for me, for some reason, um, pretty much every day between nine and noon is like my day. And then there's like two days a week where I should post up until like nine o'clock at night. And then on like Thursdays and Saturdays, it says post all the way until like one in the morning, which most of the time I'm not even up that late. So um, it's good to know though, because you can download an app for free, something like Hootsuit, and you can pre-schedule your post. So maybe you do wanna post something at one in the morning, but you're not gonna be up. Hootsuit, which is like Hoot, H-O-O-T, and then Suit, will pre-schedule your post and like post it right when you're ready. Um, and I think it's free for up to like three different, three different plat uh, social media platforms. So I really like that if you do want to stick with that like late night schedule, but you just don't want to say it. Pretty cool. Um, use appropriate hashtags and don't be bashful. Remember, hashtag the crap out of your post. Go ahead, hit me, in the, hit me up in the chat and just say hashtag the crap out of your post with as many hashtags as you can. <laughs> um, tag locations. Remember, tag the regions at Dallas, Texas, at, uh, you know, Morocco, at whatever. When you do that, you're bringing in the entire location, like all of those consumers in that area are seeing you. Stick with your niche and avoid, uh, to avoid confusing clients. Always, always, always only engage with people within your niche and engage often with those people. Don't just hit them up the first time. There we go. Now we got some hashtags popping up. <laughs> Um, don't just engage with them when you first connect with them and then like, peace out, you know, <laughs> keep engaging with them. If they're commenting on your content, respond to them. Um, come up with those catchy taglines. Remember I posted the picture of the fence post and I said, isn't this a clever post? You know, keep it like something cute and catchy. People remember things like that and you'll get more insight and, um, impressions out of those and use your videos. Um, remember unboxing, um, product reviews, customer reviews, you can use videos for all sorts of things and use your stories. People love the behind the scenes stuff. They love the prep work. And if it's in your story, it's gone within 24 hours. So it's just a unique way to keep people engaged. And that pretty much sums up the full gist of how to do all of that on Instagram. So we have one last thing before we finish up here. And um, well, two last things actually. So we at Mind Your Business, we're hosting a full-blown online marketing and branding masterclass. And this is going to cover every single one of your social media platforms. I'm talking Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, you guys, it's still alive. Um, YouTube, Oh, let's see, Periscope. There's so many out there. Pinterest, things that people are, you know, not using because they're afraid to branch outside of just Facebook. And I'm going to tell you, dealing with Facebook and Instagram algorithms is a beast. And it's something that requires a class. And the great thing with this is we help you in these master classes build your marketing campaign across all of these platforms. And you have the content forever. So I always say, if you own a business, any type of business, be it network marketing, um, brick and mortar, a service online business, anything like that, the best thing you can do is know how to do absolutely everything in your business in case your business hits a tough time and you have to fire all of your employees or let them all go. Your business doesn't crumble you still know how to run your business because you know how to do the marketing. You know how to do the management. You know how to do every little piece of the puzzle. So you can keep it afloat if you absolutely had to. I think that's so important to know. And I also think that marketing is something that is insanely expensive. And you guys, social media platforms give you free marketing. The thing is, nobody knows how to use it. And people are charging you thousands of dollars to build you marketing funnels to build you, you know, these, these master classes that don't actually teach you how to do it. They say, listen to me rant for a while, and then I'll build your product for you so that you still have to come back to me in six months to a year because you're going to need another one, right? We're not doing that at Mind Your Business. When we teach you, you have the content forever and you know how we did it. It's not a secret. We're not trying to be competitors with you. We want you to learn from us and develop and grow so that you have the tools you need to succeed on your own. 
not something that you have to come back to us all the time. Um, and then the last thing that we have going on, who doesn't want to make it extra money, right? So we at Mind Your Business have just launched our new affiliate program. Super excited about it. You guys, I literally worked like hours and hours and hours on this to make sure that I was putting the right thing out there so that everyone wins. You literally can earn 40% in commissions for every buying customer that you refer to us. It's free to sign up. All you gotta do is go to our website and sign up for our affiliate program today. Our website is www.mindyo.io business.com and the easiest way for our affiliates to make this profitable for them is to just invite people to these webinars when somebody purchases a master class um, or when somebody gets on a webinar and they decide that they want to buy one of the master classes and work with us one-on-one -on -one to really learn this and dive deep into this they follow up with you after the webinar you send them your affiliate link and they sign up boom there's a customer, you get 40% of that. And every time you do it, you get 40%, 40%, 40%. So biggest thing is invite people to the webinars if you're gonna be an affiliate. We only have one requirement. If you do become an affiliate, you have to go onto our Facebook page, the Mind Yo Business Facebook page, and give us a five-star rave review. That is the only requirement. So sign up, give us a rave review, and you can start earning money today. It is that simple. So the way we look at it is when you win, we win, everybody wins. And um, what better way to build this community than starting out with everybody being a winner. So I just want one more thing to let me know you're all still here. Hit me up in the chat and just say, I wanna be a winner. I want to be a winner. Look, we got like Sally girl, she's going crazy in here. <laughs> yes. Sally wants to be a winner. There we go. We got some people popping up. We got winners. All right. And I'm going to go ahead because we do have a little bit of time. I'm going to open up the lines and unmute everybody just in case you guys have some questions. I really want to address those because I think that that really helps out, um, you know, when one or two people have the same question, it's, it's kind of nice whenever everybody can do that. So you all are unmuted. At any point, feel free to jump in and ask a question. I'm going to give you guys about one minute, and if I don't hear anything, then we will move on. Lots of fun stuff today. I Can I say here. something? Yeah, who's this? Karen. Hi, Karen. What you got? Uh, I don't want to be embarrassed. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This is a total learning environment. <laughs> Um, I always have trouble, like you said, about the posting. On Instagram? Uh, not Instagram, on Facebook. Okay. Um, like about, like if we're talking about an ad, like anything. Uh, I always have, I always have to think what to say, um, and how to put it in a good, uh, I don't know, in a good word. Yeah, like you said, what and like in a good word that people can, like you said, that people can find you. Okay, so on Facebook, it's a little bit different. Hashtags work kind of the same way. Um, I know I got in trouble today. You believe it <laughs> on Facebook? <laughs> really? They kicked me off for one minute. Oh wow. Okay, but so it was okay. Some, sometimes but Facebook I'm will back. do that to you. <laughs> well, welcome back. Sometimes Facebook will do that to you when you post too quickly or like copy the same yes. over and over. Yeah. So the best thing that you can do is when you're posting, be upbeat um, on any of your videos, add some live music. Although be sure to put a disclaimer out saying you don't own the rights to the music. Um, I've seen some of your videos. Mean when, when I talk to them interacting, you mean? Yeah. Well, no. I'm some people about, say some. So, sorry to interrupt. Some people tell me from other viewers, oh, don't make such a long speech. Just say, or don't even, uh, just make it short and sweet. But that's boring. <laughs> Listen, Karen, you, you are so? right. 
You have to keep it relevant to who you are or not relevant. To I was a nervous wreck when I first went. <laughs> yeah. Keep it genuine to who you are as a person. If you were a long winded person, but you are giving, you know, valuable content or something that goes along with the product that you're selling, like you guys, Karen sells, um, well, she sells a, an array of products, but I know it's, it's mochi, right? Yeah. Yeah. So won't you, won't you like when you're describing that, I mean, because some of it is like scents, right? Scented products. You kind of have to like paint the picture of what somebody those- told me to write that. Say what? Somebody like told me to write a certain way or are you allowed to put your website on? Yeah. Yeah. You can always share your website. Um, it just, as long as it doesn't violate the Facebook or Instagram community standards. Correct. Yeah. So I don't know. There's so many different ways that you can do it. And I can chat with you offline more specifically on your case. Oh, that'd be awesome. Maybe yeah, next absolutely. week during the week. Absolutely. I have available. I'm always available. I just wrote you uh, uh, on your instant page, just something short, if you want to see it later. Okay, great. I will check it out. Do we have any other questions on here tonight? Not that I could think of. All right. I think this is going to wrap it up. Thank you all so much for jumping on here. Um, Super excited. I will be sharing this recording and I hope all of you have a wonderful week. See us again next Wednesday. I'm not sure what our topic's going to be yet. Um, Probably going to talk about YouTube. I've been getting a lot of questions about monetizing YouTube. So I think we're going to dive into that one. So all of you have a wonderful one and Be sure to go check out our website, www.mindyobusinessyobusiness.com. On there, you can find our Willie Tree Farmer podcast. Willie Tree Farmer is an anagram for WTF. Um, We dive deep into the WTF moments that life throws at you. We also have our YouTube channel on there. We have some of our cool branded merchandise if you want to rock some Mind Gel Business t-shirts. And that is also where you can purchase and sign up for our master classes. The overall master class right now is right at $497 and that covers every single platform and you will have that content for life. We will help you build your marketing campaign across every single platform for that price. Um, which is pretty much unheard of because you're looking at the average person typically pays about $20,000 to market something that big. And then if you just want to work on one of the platforms at a time, we sell those classes for $97 each. So um, you just have to specify in your comments when you make the purchase, which one you want to do, and we will get you started right away. With those, you also get added into a community And um, it's an open chat forum where you literally can come in and ask questions to anyone in there. You can get all kinds of experience and expertise from anyone who has purchased a package within our group. So yeah, super cool. And again, don't forget that we have our affiliate program, which you can also find on our website. That is all I have. I hope all of you have a wonderful week. See you next week.